Hey, Beth and Amir, uh, back here for part two of, we, you know, we're giving five tips, Seth, of just mental health, really for young families, but I do think these principles will, will apply to anyone. Hey, so if you missed out on the last ones, we'd actually like you to stop and listen to the first podcast in this part because there, there are five total points. I think it would help you and just kind of the heart and vision at the beginning of the first one. But yeah, we're going to finish up with the last couple points. I hope this encourages you and um, anyone who's listening right now. Number three is what I would say is declutter your spaces, and I'll explain. I'm going to challenge some of y'all. Uh, and I, I don't even know. There's there used to be shows the past couple of years of people would walk in a room and say, "How does how does no not that like there was that lady <laughs> Porter's is real Porter's is real Porter's is real and sad yeah. that show used to, before I was ever a therapist that show used to make me so sad. Yeah. Um, but you know I, I remember there was a show a couple of years ago with a little lady and she would walk in rooms and she would say something like I don't even know I never watched she was like what are these spaces giving back to you right now? No, does this bring you joy? Does this bring you joy? Yeah, and Kendra, so Kendra has asked me that many times since that show came out. But that's also like you want to <laughs> keep those has. you want to keep those t-shirts for 10 years ago because you like it. Well, and Kendra mine just getting is mad. The socks. She wants to throw away my socks that have like the tiniest holes in them and those are really important to me. The holes or the socks? <laughs> Both. <laughs> <laughs> the holes don't say tiny long. Before you know it, they're the whole. There's like sock. a whole toe sticking out. Holy sock! Those oh, are man. those so are Pastor important. Jim. Maybe maybe I need some counseling outside. Yeah, of we'll talk. <laughs> we'll we'll do. We'll turn off record and have a free session. Okay. No, but I wrote down the question. Like it might sound silly, but what are the if 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 you could articulate what the spaces of your life are giving back to you? Is it anxiety, stress, feeling overwhelmed? Or is it more like a freedom, a rest, a productivity? Because there is a correlation in your mental, emotional health to your physical spaces of your life and how that affects your mental health. So it, it can go two ways. It can, it can make you feel anxious, um, disorganized, busy, or it can give you rest. Or if like it's a workspace, it could give you focus or productivity. Um, if it's your bedroom or the living room, you say, you know, we'll talk a little specifics here in a second about when we put our son Dax down, we try to clean up the toys, stuff like that. I know that's a task, parents. But then when me and Beth on that date and our other nights are trying to have some unwind time, it's a little harder when there's stuff everywhere, you know? And there, there's just things going on in your mental health that you may not realize. So when I say spaces, man, this could be anywhere. Your living room, your bedroom, your closet, hello, your car, the back seat of your car. Ooh. Now, again, I know the mamas who maybe drive the kid around more. Beth has a toy basket in our back seat. I get it. Uh, your garage, um, if you have a home office, you know, now a lot of people work from home or maybe they just have a space, they do stuff from home. Uh, so what I would challenge you is application. All these points we're going to give you application is as a family, have a rhythm from decluttering your life. Now, again, some of this guy's is personality. Some of y'all are like, man, I am li- live a simplistic life. I don't want a lot of stuff. Some of y'all are like, Amir, I love this thing. I can't give it away. And I'm like, bro, you've had that T-shirt since college. And you're like, yeah, but it's pretty awesome. You know, like, and your wife or your, you know, I, I, there's a lot of factors that play into this. I know yeah. some some of y'all, this generally might be hard for you to do. But then also in a Western culture, especially if we think of as, as believers, Jesus is often talking about, we were talking about this with Seth Kitchell last night, just the love of money and the love of things. And, you know, Jesus even said, yeah, you want to gain the whole world yet lose your soul. And sometimes like life is not the, the accumulation of things. Even if those things are gray, I'm not bashing things. There's nothing wrong with things. But that's not where our value comes yeah. and, and where our heart comes. So I, I would say this way. I, I want you to have a rhythm as a family of, cl- of cleaning. I'm not turning into your dad, but cleaning, organizing, or sorting through things. And I want to say on these three frequencies, daily, monthly, and every 6 to 12 months. And, and Seth, I'll explain. So daily, it's like me and best rhythm in the morning. I'm, I'm hanging out before I go to work, try to be at work at 8. Uh, Beth is super mom taking care of our son making breakfast so I try to make the bed and I try to put the dishes in the dishwasher Um, I try to clean off my desk at the end of the day of my work when I'm leaving I try to make sure I throw away that Sonic drink or Starbucks cup in my car and doesn't live there for three weeks or or you throw it and it's in the back seat on the floor you know it's just like little things in the evenings we try to put away you know our usual rhythm is Beth will take our son and start bath time and I'll clean up dinner I'll clean up the kitchen start the dishwasher um, and then what me and Beth try to do really almost every day, and some of y'all are gonna think we're crazy, maybe not every day. And you used to start a timer, but we just try to do 10 minutes, Seth, while Dax is in the bath or while Dax just went down, and we just do a quick clean in the house. Do y'all sing the cleanup song while you're doing it? It may or may not be in my head and <laughs> as we're doing it. <laughs> I may or may not not knew that was because I was the youngest sibling, and then clean up, clean up, everybody, everywhere. Yes, okay. Yes, you know it. Everybody. Yeah, so we do a quick clean up. I'll do, this might sound crazy, but like five nights we I'll probably do a quick vacuum of the house mm-hmm. while he's in the bath, 
wiping down the counters, clearing out stuff, consolidating. But that's so that it doesn't build up. And then me and Beth don't always feel like, then maybe once a month we do like a deep clean in the house and stuff like that. But our house stays relatively clean. Some of that is just God honors order and God's a God mm-hmm. of order. And we want to honor good, God right? with our space. We want to honor God with the home he has blessed us with. Yep. We're so thankful we have a home. But also we, we want that those spaces to feel relaxing, to give us life. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I get it, guys. At the end of a work day, or if you're if you're a stay-at-home parent, at the end of doing all the things with your kids, that's not what you want to do. Mm-hmm. But it, there could be an implication for mental health. And I'm saying start that 10-minute timer and just do it. And if you don't get everything done in 10 minutes, cool. You got a lot more done. And then more on a monthly, you got, Seth, we might organize some stuff or, or Beth will wipe down, you know, like the stuff in our room and organize a dresser on top or stuff like that. We might clean out our car in a different way. And then what I would say six every six to 12 months, Seth, there's four words I would want everyone to remember. Very simple. Everything should fall in these four filters, the things. Am I going to keep it? Am I going to donate it? Am I going to throw it away? Or am I going to sell it? Keep, donate, throw away, sell. Me and Beth, some stuff you keep. Like, okay, we try to go through our closet every six months. I know that might sound different. Some of it was motivated. You were with us. We went to Haiti on mission trips, and, yeah. it, and we're not trying to play the, oh, we are blessed as Americans. These people have so much joy. But I just came home, and I'll never forget. One day I just looked at some shirts I loved. I hadn't worn in two years. And the thought I use, I'm not, I'm not trying to throw a conviction on you, but the question I ask myself, for example, in the closet, I say, well, first I say, when was the last time I wore this or use it? And if it's been a while, six months, a year, two years, I would say, could someone better use this than me? Could someone else better use this? And if the answer is yes, I pull it off the hanger. And sometimes it's uncomfortable. But again, it's a, sh- it's a shirt from college. Why is it so uncomfortable? I don't know. We, we make bonds with stuff. That's okay. And I put it in a bag and we take it to Goodwill. And I know some places you can donate clothes, whatever you need to do. But I just, I know there's someone in common that can use this. And I'm not using it. It's literally sitting in my closet. And there's a lot of people in need. Or some things we just throw away. Hey, we don't, we don't need this. We don't use this. Um, and some things we keep. So we go through closets. We do that with toys as parents now. Through the garage. Hello, fellas. We got to keep our garages clean. Uh, If we get something new, our grandparents, we have the only grandson on both sides of the family, so they'd be bringing toys to the house. We try to donate toys. If we get a new, I don't know, furniture or something, we try to bless someone with that furniture, get someone new. Um, We don't, and again, this is our family. We don't try to find a way to keep it and put it in another room. We're just like, we just don't need it. And and this is what this is the test. Me and Beth lived in an apartment for our first year of marriage, super chill. And we moved from our apartment and we didn't have a lot of stuff. And nobody I don't know anyone who likes moving, Seth. But then when you move, that's always the test of, oh my gosh, how much stuff do we have? Yeah. <laughs> and it's so challenging. And so I told Beth, I was like, Beth, if and when the next time we move, I we don't need like the guest bedroom bed. We don't try to have a ton of stuff under there or in the attic. You helped us put flooring in our attic. We just try to have the stuff that needs to have it because one day we're going to move. I, 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 it's a good possibility. And I don't want it to be more exhausted because we just accrued stuff. We didn't know it was up there for 10 years. So the heart is, hey, let's declutter our spaces mm-hmm. because there is value in your mental emotional health. And especially in the season of being a young parent or having multiple kids, there's already a party going on. <laughs> so let's take care of that part. And you'd be, again, if you had a rhythm of that weekly and every every couple months, it would just pay dividends for your mental health. That's, you- that is so good. I'm, this one was for me because I can tend to hold on to things a little too long. <laughs> And uh, Kendra, if you're listening to this, I just I'm sorry. I'm wow, sorry. This, this that was not a, planned, guys. Healing in the marriage. Yeah, this is not planned. And be <laughs> Thank you, Lord. The Lord has already forgiven me. Um, that's that's really good, man. I but I, again, I just don't think people realize how much that plays out in your mental emotional health mm-hmm. because there are things. This is the, this is the heart. They are taking up mental space that no, doesn't need to take up mental space. Mm-hmm. What needs to take up mental space is how you're loving your spouse or loving your kids or w- helping them with something or teaching them. So that's what needs to take up your mental space, your job, your passions, building the kingdom of God, not this thing that's been in the garage for four months and oh, I need to do so, I need to do, and it just, the pile builds. You know what I mean? Let's set some time. Let's knock it out. Let's be healthier in that way. Number four, Beth. Yeah, that's great. Number four is prioritize time with friends in this season. So um, earlier we talked about prioritizing time in your marriage, but friends are just as important. So two scriptures I want to read really quick. The first one, Psalms 133, verses 1 through 3. It says, Behold, how good and pleasant it is when the brothers dwell in unity. And it goes on, but that's what I really want to point out, just that it's pleasant when we are dwelling with people in unity and people in the same season of you, people that you can relate to and say, hey, we're on the same page in this. And then the second verse is Proverbs 27 and 17. It says, Iron sharpens iron and one man sharpens another. And I cannot say 
how good it is for me to have time specifically for me I'm in a young family season with other moms and how sharpening it is and really just to even have someone to relate with to say oh like we had dinner with Seth and Kendra last night and it's like oh Zane does that too it's not just Dax that randomly yells at the dinner table (laughs) you know like that that (laughs) sounds so silly but I do think just making that intentional time to have time with people in the same season of you so you can sharpen each other so you can grow and be on the same page so my challenge for you in this especially in this young family season is just to take initiative I think because our days are so long and you're taking care of kids and there's a lot on your plate it can be really easy to let this thing go to the back ground where you just aren't Mm -hmm. pursuing time with people you aren't prioritizing this area of your life and my challenge for you is just to start the group text who are the people that you want to hang out with that you haven't in a long time it doesn't have to be fancy the majority of our hangouts are with other young families (laughs) and there are kids running around and they're bouncing back from the mom and the dad and Mm -hmm. we're trying to entertain and we're feeding them snacks like crazy but and even though it's not what it used to look like in a different season it still fills our hearts and it still sharpens us and I I just think that this is important to God and he knew how we could help one another in this season and really in every season but especially right now so I just a recommendation I think that you have to have a mix of both so we do have times the majority of our hangouts are with kids (laughs) so kids are running around but we do have times like last night um, which this is rare. This probably hasn't happened in a year, right? We, we just went to dinner. It was it was a very memorable moment. That's <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> and it takes a lot of work to make it happen. Like, we'll you know, say specifically what happened last night. Last night, we got to have dinner with Seth and Kendra. We went and ate at a great and restaurant. They had a babysitter. That's what you're saying. Yes. And we like had adult conversation and we just laughed and talked about serious things. And then we were silly and we talked about our kids and we talked about ministry. And got that Brahms ice cream. <laughs> we did. We ate Brahms and... <laughs> But it, it was a lot of work to get there, but it was so worth it. So I just challenge you to make sure that you're having a little bit of both. Um, and yeah, I think that those moments, there's so much gold in it. And there's a reason that scripture encourages us time and time again to make sure we're prioritizing time with people like-minded, being in unity with them. I love that. Uh, you said something that, that reminded me, um, one of something that's really funny. And I think that everybody can be guilty of this. But it's when somebody says, man, we should hang out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, my favorite thing mm-hmm. is counting how many times someone says that and then how many times people actually pull out their calendar yep. and make it happen. That's I, I love looking at people's faces when this happens, and I'll pull my calendar out, and I'm like, okay, I have this, 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 and this available. For some people, that is offensive. For mm-hmm. me, it means everything because yeah. it means that someone is being intentional wow. with their time good. and my time. Absolutely. And so for the longest time, um, if somebody would say that and there was never like they pulled out their phone and they got a calendar out or, you know, ch- tried to organize in that moment, the likelihood of it happening is very rare. Mm-hmm. And so just an encouragement um, off of what Bethany was saying is scheduling what is most important. Y'all talked right. about date nights. I mean, your time with the Lord mm-hmm. and um, for some people, they're like, I just want it to be organic. Well, let me ask you this. How is that going for you? Right. <laughs> just letting everything yeah. be everything organic. Be yeah. You mm-hmm. have to be scheduled in some of these things, especially if you're like me. I just forget. Mm-hmm. Like Kendra and I can look up and it's been three weeks since we've spent quality time together mm-hmm. or quality time with other people who are in the same season as us. Yeah. And so this is like, this is really good. This hits home for, for me, for sure. Yeah, and I think the hack I found, Seth, it's like kind of silly, but it's kind of real. We've had those same, so let's say couples. We have friends that are single, and we love them too, but we, we, let's say couples, and even some that don't have kids, and we should hang out, we should hang out, especially see them at church, see them at Walmart. And what I say now, it's the hack I said, put us in a group, get our wives to put us in a group text. Yes. I'm not bashing that's good. the dad that's listening right now, and you're the man, and planning. I like playing. It's more every time we get in a group text with the wives, they make it happen. Yeah. <laughs> this is not a joke. It's like a hundred percent. I had a hundred percent. Even if we have friends listening to this, they know we, Hey, me and the bro will text. Hey, what are you doing yeah, next week? Next week. And then I'll tell Beth, man, me and Seth have been texting for two weeks about hanging out. And Beth will put a text with Kendra. And the next day we have a date. And I'm like, well, that was good. <laughs> that was good. So now I'll just say, Hey, put us in a group text with our wives and it happens. But that Seth, you just said it. When we get in a group text, it's different than, Hey, we should hang. And yep. you walk away, high five, see each other. Hey, see you next week when I'm picking up my kids. So you, you know, 
Well, and I just think you can get really insecure when you haven't had time with people and begin to think, man, Mm -hmm. you know, I don't have that many friends. People don't want to hang out. And the reality is when was the last time you initiated something and you said, hey, like put yourself out there because people probably do want to hang out with you, but they're not sitting around thinking about, you know, just when's my next opportunity Mm going to be? It it takes communication. It takes initiative. And it's always worth it. Like once you get there, the sacrifice, scheduling the sitter, whatever it looks like. It's like we left last night, man. We were like, man, our hearts are so full. We could have done that for five more hours. But yeah. it's just you have to prioritize that time. Thank you, Adam. Yeah, and sure. I think I want to highlight something Beth just said always, but I think coming wherever, you know, COVID's in a unique place is better than it has been. But in a post COVID world, that was always a narrative. Let's talk a little mental health. Let me get my, my our interns call me Pastor Dad, but I call him like Pastor Therapist Dad. <laughs> hey, it's so easy for our thoughts to run. Mm-hmm. Man, we haven't heard from so-and-so in a while. Man, they forgot to text us back. Man, well, I, you know, and we really, guys, what we do is we make assumptions. I'm not, again, case by case, but sometimes, hey, let's be the one that initiates. Mm-hmm. And you might say, well, Mira, I always initiate. Okay, well, if you always initiate, let's initiate with a new friend <laughs> because if that friend's <laughs> too busy or is not responding. But we can't let the enemy or we can't get in our own yeah. thoughts sometimes to believe the worst and think, man, they hadn't texted us. Or, man, they forgot. Let's be initiators. I'll never forget. We were on a mission trip. The guy was talking about something completely unrated. And I'll never forget what he said. He said, what you invest in, you'll be connected to. Mm. And so he said, hey, in your life, sometimes we ask, why isn't people checking on me? Why aren't people reaching out to me? And I would say, well, that's a great question. But I would have followed up and say, hey, how are you reaching out? How are you checking in? How have you invested? Because what you invest in, you'll be connected to. And some right. of that is in relationships. And I know in the world we live in, it's hard. And, and people have different convictions uh, uh, just about hanging out now, what that looks like, all these different things with their kids or, or friends. But I just want to challenge you. Hey, let's be the person that sends the text. Yep. Let's be the person that reaches out. Let's be the person... And and maybe some of these relationships, you need to have a convo to get back on the same page. Mm-hmm. But l- where does that play out? It doesn't play out in your physical health. It doesn't play out in your spiritual health. Maybe. No, it plays out in your mental, emotional health, mm-hmm. the discouragement, the frustration that can come out. Hey, let's just get on the same page, send the text, humble ourselves. If there's a relationship we got to restore, and let's make some memes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Let's hang out and make some memes. Beth, anything else? No, that's great. Number five. Mumbo number five, I've also been exposed on this teaching set that all my points are like double the length of Beth's, and it's like she's so good at being a your man. You're a man of many words. We actually talked about a couple of weeks ago at church that the difference between uh, Matthew and Mark, and Matthew, oh, yeah. it, took, it took about five chapters to say what Mark said in about three verses. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's nothing wrong with that. But you know, like that. the narrative is like girls, <laughs> you know, there's like the average female speaks this many words. There's like some of that research in the past. An average male, and I'll, I like shatter it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, number five, last tip about mental health, and we'll, we'll rehearse all of them, is m- maintain healthy communication. And I'm talking about this within your marriage. Um, for those of you married, if you're a single parent, hey, take all these these tips and apply them the best you can. I know that your season looks different and I, we pray a special grace of God over you. I think single parents are legends for Absolutely. all that they do. But when we're talking about couples that are married, um, maintain healthy communication. You know, when you're dating or you're newlyweds, communication, communication. I've often heard it said that if, if, a, if a marriage was a home, it's like communication is, is the flooring or it's the lifeblood of the marriage. It's the only thing that touches every room of the house. It's mm-hmm. so amazing. Well, y'all know what happens. You have a kid. You have multiple kids. And for some reason, communication and the, all the aspects of that, there's a lot of aspects of communication. It's not just conflict. They aren't as good as they used to be before you got married. or They aren't as good as when you got out of that first couple weeks of having a kid or having multiple kids. So I just want to challenge you guys to maintain healthy communication, but in three specific ways. The first one is an expectation, okay? Expectation. Uh, we assume often, we, we know what the spouse is thinking, wives out there, we don't, we can't, right. us fellas can't read your brain. Uh, I wish we could. It would make our life way easier. We're just not that good at it. And mm-hmm. uh, and maybe, and oftentimes you have to repeat yourselves to us and we're so sorry. But <laughs> oftentimes we just got to get on the same page and have clarity of what you expect. Why? Because you've added a human or another human in your life and it has shifted. Mm-hmm. So we can't just assume that our old expectations, the old way we did life would be the same. Or if it is, say nothing changes. And that's awesome if your family has the exact same we just got to agree upon it and get on the same page. But oftentimes we don't want to have that conversation for whatever reason. We're tired of all that. So a few just quick examples of expectation, big picture specific. Who plans the meals? Who does things around the house, specifically each thing? Who takes the kids to school or daycare or preschool? What ti- how, Who does bedtime routine? Who gets up when the child cries at 3 a.m.? You know what I'm saying? That's always a tough one. That is a tough one. <laughs> who owns the budget? 
maybe some of these things didn't shift. Maybe they do. But what happens is when we don't have clear expect, I'm a kind of guy, if I don't know what's expected of me, I will most often fail Mm -hmm. or I'll put way too much effort, Seth, into something. And I, and it would have been accomplished if I just would have known what's expected of me. But sometimes I need to ask Beth. It's Mm -hmm. not a Beth's withholding from me. So the the first area is that, and, and, and let me say something real quick, gender roles, uh, norms, all that. Cool. You and your family, your family is unique. Your family is connected by the Lord. I don't care who does what. Y'all are a team. You figure it out and you rock it. I'm not here to tell you the guy should do this. And the girl. Sure, whatever. But your family is amazing. You find out y'all's rhythm. You find out what's your flow. It's unique for every family and just do it. You're a team. The second one is frustrations. Talking about healthy communication. So expectation, now frustrations. When expectations aren't met or we have a misunderstanding or we frustrate uh, each other, do we talk about it? Mm-hmm. Do we resolve it? And you might think, well, yeah, I'm here. but again, when you add a kid and or a second kid or a third kid, or maybe some of y'all adopted a kid or fostering a kid, you know, some of y'all are amazing in that regard. It's different. Things are different. And I always tell people in therapy, yeah, I know every night you don't want to have a hard heart to heart and talk through the, the frustrating things, but we'll also just carry things. And what, this is what happens for me and Beth sometimes. Something small of frustration, we won't address, we won't talk about it, or we won't resolve, and then it grows into something bigger. Or maybe more importantly, it's how we speak to each other, how we try to resolve it, so this is more conflict resolution, is unhealthy, and it's not even the problem now that we're arguing about, it's how we're trying to talk about the problem. You know what I mean, Seth? So hey, if we're... Yes. Don't let those <laughs> those things, sometimes a little, sometimes not, let's, uh, let's have healthy communication with our frustrations. Let's be forthright. I, I always tell people it's not if, you know, we, we were raised spiritually, Seth, Kendra, me, Beth, of healthy communication is a part of life. It's yeah. not, that's not a weird thing. Uh, it's more, so many people don't think co- confrontation is good mm-hmm. or it will, healthy confrontation is part of life. And in marriage, that's, that's part of it. It's yeah. feedback, it's sharing, but how? It's always the how, how you bring it up. Your spouse is not going to be perfect. This is a new season or you're adjusting. Even going from a one-year-old to three-year-old is different. Um, Let's just get on the same page and don't let something that could be smaller put a wedge in there. And let me me say another thing. Hey, if you're stuck, ask for help. Mm. Ask a couple older than you, farther along, maybe in your church family, maybe some mentors, Mm -hmm. maybe your parents, maybe uh, a couple you look up to, and maybe it needs to go as far as therapy. Let's not be the prideful ones that we have the same argument for weeks and months and we refuse to get help. We just had a couple in our house this week younger than us they're the sweetest can be they've had just a recurring argument and me and beth just got to sit listen do our best to encourage them and and they just got to a place where they said if we don't get help this is going to get worse and i just affirmed them in the beginning i said i'm just so proud of y'all be some people's norm and i don't it's a lot of things that's i think some of it can be a pride a false humility we don't want to ask for help well every couple struggles every couple has confrontation every couple needs help at times don't let the frustrations hear me i'm not saying fights don't let what starts as frustrations put a wedge in your family and where does this play out your mental health mm-hmm. yeah can i say something with that so something Please. kendra and i have uh that i feel like we're experts in this this area right here it's uh, <laughs> navigating it's a uh, conflict resolution but he- here's the thing that we've realized it in any sporting event you've got two teams and um the reason and the purpose that you have an umpire or a referee is because they are making the final call. Hmm. And ultimately, when they make the call, that's the call that's made. And then from there, you move on with the competition. I think sometimes what the enemy wants to do in marriages, and we see this all the time, it's one, it's to make you think that you're the only one struggling with this. Mm -hmm. And if you were to tell another couple or tell a leader or a pastor or whoever that you're going to be humiliated, so that's a lie from the pits of hell. That's not true. Right. And the second thing is the enemy wants you to make make you believe that you are on separate teams mm. and you're not. Right. You're on the same, same team. team. And so this is what Kendra and I, we say, we we have permission to say this to each other. In the middle of what could be a conflict resolution or an argument or whatever, one of us will just whisper, hey, we're on the same team. Wow. Mm-hmm. And you would be surprised how quick it'll kill the conflict and it's just sometimes it's a hug, sometimes it's a kiss, sometimes it's uh, several minutes of silence. And mm. we just, you know, we it's almost like it's just the reminder, it, you forget. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's nothing wrong with bringing in a referee even though you're on the same team. Because wow. yeah. I think people, th- they think, well, if we're on the same team, we don't need a referee. Well, yes, you do. Yeah. And mm-hmm. if you try to navigate all of your life's problems without one, 
then you will see the fruit of that in years to come. And so I think that we both deal a lot with this and it's, I think it's pride. I think mm-hmm. pride is what limits people from asking for or insecurity, too. insecurity. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I was just going to say with that, with the idea of being on the same team, I will oftentimes give myself a pep talk before we go into frustration <laughs> resolution. So just going in to <laughs> sit down with a mirror to talk through something hard, I will genuinely talk to myself in my spirit and say, remember that he loves you. He sacrifices for you. He serves our family. Like reminding myself that we're on the same team, essentially. But just choosing in that moment to believe the best. Like I may feel hurt and frustrated or misunderstood right now, but I know in my heart of hearts that this man loves me and that he's for me. So I know this is a miscommunication. I know that we're not on the same page, but I know who he is, and we're going to do our part to get this resolved. So just the, the same idea, remembering you're on the same team, believing the best about each other when you even when you feel really hurt and emotions are high, just choosing to kind of talk yourself down off that ledge. Yeah, that's good. And hey, let us say this, the elephant in the room. We're not we're not minimalizing how hard these oh, conversations yeah. can be. Guys, this is a new season, new challenges. It's stressful. Sometimes our kids going through a sleep regression, sometimes um they just started this, you know, and then there's just stresses or challenges, but I'm, we're also not tolerating if your conflict turns out where one spouse is rude, abusive. We're also not just saying, I believe That's the correct. best yeah. as your spouse yells at you or, right. Hey guys, we're, we're, we've been talking to couples recently as, Hey, we, we got to let conflicts. There's got to be some respect and honor rules. And I know it's hard because you, you feel offended, you feel dishonored, whatever the situation can be. And then words are said. And then again, like I said earlier, we're, we're yelling, we're cussing, whatever we're doing, we're throwing every, we act out our frustration really out of pain. We're not saying that's okay, but I, I wish there was some guardrails where we never even got to that place mm-hmm. because and some of that, it's a whole nother combo of learning each other's communication style, how you process, how, you know, sometimes I'm, I'm more of a verbal processor, best internal processor. Well, if I bulldoze Beth and say, we got to talk now, she's always going to get, feel overwhelmed, you know, and, and, and do that unless I give her space to do that. So th- there's those factors too. We're not minimizing how this can be. So frustrations. So we talked about expectations, frustrations, and my last one's my favorite. It's appreciation. I'm a pastor. I didn't mean these to, to rhyme in the shuns, but you they did, did. You did really well. That's thank it's you. memorable. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. And if we drop just some beats right now, I'm going to just, <laughs> hey, expectation. Okay, so I'll stop. <laughs> expectation, frustration, appreciation. There is r- so much research on couples who express consistent appreciation in their marriage have significantly more marriage satisfaction compared to couples who rarely express ap- appreciation. Me and Beth get to lead a, a young married couple life group that we love more just for fun. It's not really part of our job title. A lot of them, the, them that they're in our college ministry and they've grown up, and we always end, based off some of the research I've seen, I always, I made them in the beginning, but now they love to do it. I always make, we end life group, I, I say in front of everyone, hey, you got to express one thing of appreciation about your spouse uh, in the last month. And then the other one has to say, I received that. Because how many of y'all know, sometimes we get encouraged and we don't receive it. Uh, or we just like, oh, we try to minimize someone encouraging you because there's research there. So, hey, let's be couples who appreciate each other. This can be as simple as you say, thank you guys. Beth will tell me thank you 15 times in a day. I don't even feel like I deserve all those. But it encouraged me and it, may, it actually reinforces me to want to do the dishes, to want to help her out here. But it's also her saying, hey, I acknowledge what you did for me. I acknowledge when Dax was crying, you came over and helped me. Um, be specific with your appreciation. Hey, thank you for doing this. If Oftentimes, Seth always said, if you think something, say it. Mm-hmm. Because anyone who has a pulse, that's a phrase we always say in college ministry, they, they love encouragement, whether they believe it or not. Uh, and model, this is a hu- huge one. I know our kids could be young and young family season, but any age kids, hey, model to your kids what it's like to be thankful. Mm-hmm. It can be thankful for the little things, but also thankful for the big things. So healthy communication, yeah, it's expectation. Yeah, it's frustration. But hey, let's appreciate each other. Be specific, be intentional, but every day there's opportunities to appreciate each other. So five mental health tips in this season of young families, but again, I think we can apply this to any season of life, even if you're not married, you don't have kids, or you have older kids, managing your stress, prioritizing time together, decluttering your spaces, enjoying times with friends, and maintaining healthy communication. Just some application, Seth, I would say is, man, for you and your spouse, or if you're a person listening to this and maybe you're in a different season, what are one of these that stick out to you? One of these that maybe the spirit of God has challenged you with that you can apply, you can take some steps in to be healthier and it it will hopefully help you be more healthy in your mental health overall. Awesome. Hey, thank you guys. Uh, Could y'all pray over just whoever's listening right now? Uh, I I pray in the words of John, third John one, two, that everyone listening may enjoy good health. Lord, 
their spiritual health, their mental, emotional health, their physical health, relational health, and that all may go well with them, even as their soul is getting along well. So, Lord, I pray for everyone listening, whether they're driving to and from somewhere or at home or whatever they're doing, working out. Lord, I just pray health over them in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you that one aspect of the life of you've made us, Lord, is our mental and emotional health. So I pray, Lord, you would speak to them, God, on some of these areas, maybe that they're doing great in, that they can continue to do well, but also, Lord, some areas that they can improve, they can take steps to be more healthy in this way, and and if they're a parent, a healthier parent, to be a healthier spouse, to be a healthier son and daughter to you, Jesus. So we just pray that health over them in the name of Jesus. Yeah, and God, I just pray along with that, that as they pursue health in this area, Lord, that you would, that you're light of Christ would just shine bright through their families, God, through them as individuals, uh, to, even to their children and their family, Lord. I pray that as we pursue health and, per, and just pursue you and want to honor you in this area of our lives, that you would multiply that and let it glorify you in that way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.